Hi, I'm Zivi Owens, and you're listening to Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. This 30-minute podcast features a new author interviewed by me every single day, 365 days a year for about 30 minutes. I am also the publisher for Zibby Books, which publishes 12 books a year in fiction and memoir. Our books are already out now. You can check it out on zibbybooks.com. And we have a magazine called Zibby Mag, where we have lots of wonderful essays and lifestyle features. That's at zibbymag.com. We have classes at zibbyclasses.com. And I recently opened a bookstore in LA called Zibby's Bookshop at 1113 Montana Avenue at 11th Street in Santa Monica. I hope that you are able to enjoy some of our other offerings. But this here podcast is the basis of all of it and started in 2018. And no matter what I do, this is basically my favorite thing. Enjoy. Allison Holkerboss is the author of Keep Dancing Through, A Boss Family Groove. Allison is a pro dancer, on-air personality, and Emmy-nominated choreographer on Dancing with the Stars. Best known to television audiences for her amazing performances as a competitor, all-star dancer, and choreographer on Fox's hit dance competition series, So You Think You Can Dance, she also hosted Design Star, Next Gen, on HGTV. Prior to that, Allison worked alongside her late husband, Stephen Twitch Boss, as co-host for Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings. Holker Boss makes her home in Los Angeles with her children, Wesley Maddox, Zaya. Keep Dancing Through is her first picture book. Welcome, Allison. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss Keep Dancing Through a Boss Family Groove. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And you're just so lovely. Like you have such a great energy about you. I just had to say that. Oh, thank you. Look at that. It's <laughs> like it's been two minutes and already, you know. <laughs> but thank you. You too. Okay. Tell everybody about your picture book. The fact that you wrote this with your late husband, who many people know, then the book came out. I want to hear the whole thing. And if if this is a trigger for you, if this is a joy for you, like, I just want to hear the whole thing. Well, first with writing the book, we wrote it back in 2021 and I have the absolute best partners. I partnered up with Disney and the whole concept behind the book was really just following our family, a day in the life of the boss family. And it follows my kids and through different obstacles that they've all actually undergone, right? Um, and nothing crazy. This is a children's book, right? It's still supposed to be light and, and inspiring for kids, but nothing too dark. But it is something that they each go through something. And in our family, we've always really believed in affirmations. I've taught my kids since they were little, all three of them in different categories of their life and different age ranges, how to use affirmations to really help them get through things or encourage them to move forward and all these you know, different skills I try to instill in them to make them the strongest versions that they can. So while you're following our family through a day in the life, um, they go through these like different obstacles and they use affirmations to help each other get through it. And it's interesting because you asked if it was a trigger for me having this book come out. When I decided to actually still release this book and still come forward with it, I kept reading it over and over again to myself. And and if it was okay, and, and how would I feel about it? And how would my kids feel about it? And then I realized that God and the universe put this in front of me because this is my purpose. I'm for myself going to make sure I stay strong and stay strong for my children. Quite literally, what I'm going to do is keep dancing through. Yeah. And if there was anything that I was going to do to give back to all those people that have followed me for years and supported me and supported my husband's incredible journey and his incredible life and followed us individually and then seeing us come together and then having these beautiful children together, I was like, I want to give them the permission to also keep dancing through. I love that. You know? And so for me, it's interesting when your purpose kind of calls on you and you have to just allow God to kind of take the reins and just pull you where he sees you best fit and suited. And so for me, this seems bigger than me at this point. And so I thought it was very important to have this come out. And then it's also, you know, for my kids, it's also a time capsule of our life, you know, for them to be able to look back and, and remember how beautiful and how, you know, we, we lean on each other. We're still going to do that. And all the values that we believed in and I believed in and he believed in that we still instill in our kids, we're going to keep doing that, you know? 
It would actually be kind of neat for other families to talk, like insert their own challenges, not just as they read, but almost like a little workbook or something like, what do you have to keep dancing through today? You know, because everybody goes through the big and the small and having like a guide like this where it's like, here's how we do it. Like, what's your mantra? You know, it's so helpful. Well, I love that so much. I love that. Like, that's so inspiring to hear. And you know, for me and my kids, every morning they say, I'm strong, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm kind. Of course, for Maddox, it's I'm handsome. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also say things like, um, which is really sweet when I hear them say, it, I say, we do that. And then they finish it by saying the hard things. Mm. So I love, you know, your bit of like hearing what other people's mantras or sayings would be. But we we swear by them and, and I have my kids lean on each other and say them to each other when they're having a hard time. So I love that. To your point about the universe, I mean, there's really, it's like somebody wants you to keep remembering something and what better way than publishing your own children's book and having to read it out loud over and over again. Like if you wrote a, a grown up book, right? You Maybe you do a reading or two or you could talk about what happened, but you wrote a children's book with like the words you're going to say them a million times. I mean, it's really genius when you think about it. Yeah. I think it's, it's something special for my kids because they also really a part of the process mm -hmm. and they were like lighting up when they first got to physically touch it, which was really cool and special. So, you know, whenever you're having hard times, I feel like it's always, you only are having a hard time because you've had so many good times. Mm -hmm. you know? And so for me with the kids, being able to see them light up and, and experiencing something of almost success in themselves you know, because they, they were a part of it and now they get to physically see and experience the success of it and feel like they accomplished something so big, even through something so hard. Yeah. Well, you know, there's so many ways to help people through harder times. And one is just addressing something hard head on, right? Like here is how we cope and let me explain it to you. But this is the ultimate sort of show, don't tell, right? This is this is just our joy. This is how you capture your joy. And whether the person you love is still in your life or not, you remember them with such love and joy that it can infuse that positivity going forward. Absolutely. And and I, I want to instill in them so much love and joy still. I don't want them to be scared of that. You know, I don't want them to shy away from it. You know, even though it sometimes feels scary or is it okay? Does, is this mm -hmm. right? And I want them to know that all of those feelings are completely valid and real and understood. And, but they still can move through love and joy. Yeah. By the way, I... My daughter was in a soccer game in the rain, just like in this book, but they did not cancel it. Thank you. So, <laughs> so you are much better off. So whatever, you know, sadness and having it canceled, it's far better than what we all had that day. Absolutely drenched. So anyway. <laughs> You're probably right in that. <laughs> Today, like two of my kids, my older kids are away at boarding school. And just right before this, my husband and I were downstairs and on his iPad, he was watching, you know, one kid play hockey. And I had my, my daughter swim meet on my phone. I was like, this is the greatest parenting moment ever. We just get to sit here at home and watch them both. Anyway. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, mom life. Anyway, so when you were writing the book, tell me a little bit more about that and working with this illustrator who's so talented, Shailene Wright. Oh, so great. What was all of that like? And tell us like the day-to-day -day of what that looks like writing a, a children's book for you all. Writing a children's book, I, I know this is going to sound crazy and I hope it doesn't sound wild, but it felt easy. Like it it felt like we were supposed to do it and it just it just was something that we would sit there and we just really bring up, you know, because again, it was just a day in our life. So we just started talking about what does a day in our lives look like and what happens. And there's a moment when we run into a neighbor named Dale and Sue. And that's something that had happened that <laughs> day while we were writing the book. You know, we were so close with our neighbors and we were like, we have to put Dale and Sue in there. <laughs> um, but really, I feel like the process was so easy for us because we just got to be honest. We got to be honest and we knew the messaging, what we wanted it to be. We knew why. And so for, for me, when I look back at the whole process, it was like the words just kind of fell out of us really mm -hmm. easily. And, you know, we're actually putting the writing together, though. We had these affirmations that we constantly say. But in the book, we wanted it to feel a little bit more rhythmical than how we usually say it at home. So mm -hmm. the one thing that did take us a second to kind of like, oh, how do we, 
how do we get the pages to kind of feel like it's almost like a song? Because yeah, for it us, does sound like a song. Thank you. Yeah, like for us, music is just so important to our family. And, you know, we always are playing music. And depending on what we're doing, it kind of depends on the mood of the music as well. We kind of almost pair it like you'd pair like cheeses with wine, like music mm-hmm. with our food. <laughs> so it, for us, that was something that we really wanted to make sure in this book that. You know, I'm not a, a musician, but I am a dancer. Mm-hmm. So music just means so much to me that we wanted it to have this flow to it. So we added some kind of like rhythm where it kind of feels like you almost nod while you're reading it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, did I miss an MP3 file of a song somewhere? Like, was that in one of the emails? Like that this is actually a song? And I was like, no, I can't find the song. So I guess it isn't. But yes, yeah. it very much sounds like lyrics, which is great because and kids love reading that sort of repet you know not repetitive that sounds negative but you know the refrains like that or yeah. yeah it has a flow to, has a rhythm to it and you want the kids to feel that when they're reading it yeah how did you get into dance originally well I saw my sister dance my older sister I saw her performing. And I remember watching her in this routine. The choreographer was Mia Michaels, who's well, you know, Emmy nominated, well around, an incredible choreographer. And I just saw my sister dancing and I was so moved by it. She looked like a warrior, like she was so powerful and strong. And I, from that moment, just knew I wanted to dance. And that was it. I started dance lessons literally, I think, like the next day or the next week and never looked back. And it kind of feels like dance found me. If mm-hmm. that sounds right or crazy, but it did, it found me and just kind of moved the rest of my life. That's amazing. And what has it been like? You've chosen to be very open on social media, like many people, but you're very open about your life. And then to go through a trauma in real time on social, how did you figure out sort of what to post, what to keep close to the vest? You know, I was trying to. I was like sort of analyzing, like, how did you do that? How did you get through? What are you showing the rest of us as you go through this personal journey, voyage, whatever? Like, how did you, or did you just like make it up as you went along? I mean, I'm sure you didn't have a strategy. You were just living through it, but. (laughs) There was no strategy. It was just, you know, I've shared so much of my life with the public. I mean, Mm -hmm. people have been really following my journey since I was 18 years old. Wow. It's kind of all I know. And I don't mean that in a positive way or a negative way or any of it. It's just, it's just so kind of ingrained in me. And when everything happened, I never really thought about what things would look like or how, you know, things needed to be. I just kind of more or less every once in a while was like, you know, these, you know, individuals and these followers and or whatever you want to call everyone, they they're an integral part of life. Mm-hmm. And um, I just found it, you know, in a well-balanced or trying to be balanced with myself way that I wanted to make sure that I let them be seen and heard mm-hmm. through. Because I truly feel like I've been carried by everyone. I feel I feel protected and I feel like I have this external barrier and wall that people have really helped create for me just to kind of help me get through this. And I just feel like... I wanted to kind of, in any way I could, give back to them for being that. Because everyone's been so helpful and supportive. And I just have so much gratitude for that. Had you gone through loss before? This was my first trauma, for sure, in my life. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, it's all the things that people say it's going to be. I didn't know that. But it's it's a mental, it's spiritual it's also physical. I, I took out a lot of physical pain from it that I wasn't expecting. And it, it came with so many challenges I would have never expected. But I, like I said, I've had so much support and I've had so many people just, you know, coming to my aid and coming to my in my family's, you know, side and just wanted to be there for us. And I feel like I look at 20, the end of 2022 and 2023 as being you know, something in a a chapter of my life that I really honestly can't even fully put and express into words, Mm -hmm. uh, the hardships that I had to overcome and get through. But I really have used starting in 2024 as a catapult to really allow myself to try to close that chapter, not forget, Mm -hmm. you know, with the book, you can always go back and open that and, and read it and see it and understand it and learn from it and grow from it and respect it and love it. 
but try to move into a new space for ourselves. Yeah. It's so important to feel like you have the permission even to move forward and to try to go ahead and make new memories and all of that. It's hard. It's so hard. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. I should have started the conversation with that, but um, it sounds like a platitude, but I really, you know, my heart goes out to you and your family for everything that, that happened. And it's just so beautiful that you could turn it into something so joyful and to give back to the rest of the world. It's really wonderful. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Do you find books to be a, a space of solace for you? Is reading a big thing for you? your kids, reading to your kids, all of that? Are there go-to books that you all love or how have they played a role in your life? Absolutely. I love reading. My favorite book is Big Magic. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm right now uh, reading uh, Women Who Run With Wolves. Mm. I, I find reading to be a place for me to find inspiration and to help me find myself. You know, I read a lot of like self-help books, motivational books. It's kind of the space I find myself in. Yeah. And I do, I find it to be so helpful. You know, I often say your words are powerful, right? Your words become your reality is another affirmation me and my kids say. And so even when I choose, you know, music or the books I read, I try to make sure it's something that's going to lift my spirits. I find that to be so important and words are powerful mm-hmm. and they have so much meaning behind them. And so I, I love to read. So for for people who are listening and and not watching this, I have to point out that you have like the most amazing hair I've ever seen. And her hair is like, I know this is not the point of this podcast, but I have like major hair envy with like super long, beautifully like colored and sculpted locks. Okay. What is the secret of having such amazing hair? Oh my goodness. You're so funny. (laughs) Um, I have a great hair stylist. Shout out to Vanessa. No, honestly, can I, listen, the tea, I'll just give you the tea. (laughs) <laughs> do I expose myself right now? They're extensions. Really? Oh my gosh. That is- <laughs> well, okay. Actually, I feel so much better now because I'm like, how can hair even do that? Well, that's th- th- it looks so natural. I never would have known. I It looks amazing. Now I'm like, maybe I'll try extensions. <laughs> my girl. <laughs> All right. I'm going to look up Vanessa. I'll just search Search the web. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just search Vanessa. Yeah, There's no no one yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be writing more books like this? Or do you have more coming Absolutely. in the series? Or what's what's next? Absolutely. We'll be writing more. I love, I love writing. I love journaling. I love, you know, all those things that for me, this just felt such a path for me and a place that I I love it. I, I love you know, the partners I have with Disney is also so fantastic and they've been wonderful. And so we definitely want to keep going down this route for sure. Amazing. And what about the rest of your life and your dancing and TV and all, just all the stuff? What else is coming coming up for you or that you're excited about? I am so excited that I'm a judge on So You Think You Can Dance this season. That is just a place that's like my home. So to be back on that stage and, and sitting at that table just means so much to me. So that is something that I, again, just feel so called to do in a, a new space for myself because I've always been the dancer. I've always been the performer or choreographer of a project that now to sit back and almost help someone else on their journey is just such a, a new step and a new place for me to be that I'm very, very excited about it. So fun. What about like the new dancer? Like I am not a particularly good dancer. I will only really dance with my kids when <laughs> which I have like no shame. That's that's true. Do you like do you ever want to start from scratch with like help somebody who's really helpless like get in better dancing? And what is is the secret just not being too self-conscious? Is that how much a part of it is the mental game of dancing? I always tell everyone, and people think I'm joking, but I'm dead serious when I say this. Dancing is really just walking with style. Hmm. That's it. You like a two-step, it's just a walk. It's just a cool walk, and you just kind of add your own flair, your own spice to it. You just got to season it up a little bit, however you find to be right. But really, it's just walking and just doing it real cool. So <laughs> I was kind of like, if I'm teaching someone from the basics, I'm like, let me see your walk. And then, and then if I add something to it, it's really just a walk. So that's whenever I'm teaching someone new, I always start from that place. And then they always feel really comfortable because you're like, if you're right, Mm -hmm. just walking really cool. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's amazing. What would your girlfriend say about you that would surprise other people? Like, what do they know that we don't know? 
Oh my girl. Oh my goodness. I would say, man, people come to me a lot just to be heard. Mm. A lot of people come to me to be heard. And um, I think my daughter gave me the best compliment I've ever received in my entire life. We were at my, you know, I had a, a birthday dinner this last year and everyone was going around the table just to share, you know, either like a memory or a moment that we shared or something that, you know, some, some gratitude towards me, you know, which is interesting to say about yourself. But when I got to my daughter, which I could cry right now, she was like, my mom makes people feel like they're home. Hmm. That's so nice. Yeah. So that to me, that was the best compliment I've ever received in my life. Oh my gosh. And what do you think, you know, your late husband would say about all of this if he could see what's going on? I think he'd be really proud. Be really proud. I think he'd be proud of me, but I think he'd be really proud of the kids. They've handled everything in themselves with such grace and kindness, and they've never let this hold them back. And I, I I think that they are just the the most wonderful humans in the entire world. Oh, that's so amazing. Do you have any parenting tips? It sounds like you're really good at <laughs> staying close to kids. Somebody just I just read somewhere that the the how to know if you're a successful parent is if your kids actually want to hang out with you when they're older. What do you think, what do you think about that? <laughs> I love, well, me and my daughter are best friends. So, I mean, I'm mom first always, but we're best friends. So, yeah, I mean, I'll take that. I'll take that for sure. But I think the parenting advice I would give is just see them and hear them. You can learn a lot from your kids. I don't always look at being a parent as a position to always know Mm -hmm. and have an answer all the time. There's so much power in saying, I don't know. Let's figure it out together. That's amazing. Have you found supportive other widows? I mean, widow sounds like such an outdated term, but anyone who's gone through spouse loss or let, you know, I know there's a whole community. I've read a lot of books and have a lot of friends have gone through something similar. Have you found solace in that group in particular, or is it more like you don't, I I don't know. I'm just wondering. You know, I haven't really gone that route per se, Mm -hmm. um, as far as like a community of it, but I do, I've had a lot of people who have dealt with a lot of loss in different kinds of forms come to me and reach out to me wanting to share their stories. And I try to be a safe place for them as they're trying to be a safe place for me. But I do, I have like such a great group of community around me. I call it my chosen family out here in LA, Mm -hmm. but I do, I have a really great chosen family. You know, I have a bookstore in LA. You have to go check it out. I would love to. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. Please send that that information my way. I will. And anytime you want to come to an event or whatever, we do lots of events all the time. So. Oh, I love that. Okay. That'd be great. Well, okay. Last question. What advice would you give to aspiring authors, particularly of children's books? Ooh, best advice I would give to someone writing a children's book is make it fun. Even if there's a lesson in it, even if there's something that needs to be said, something needs to be direct, let kids have fun. Let kids have fun. That is excellent advice. Excellent advice about writing. Excellent advice about parenting. You're you're like getting the full full sweep of hair. Oh my gosh. Like I I feel totally equipped to go through the rest of my day. So thank you very much for all of it. (laughs) Thank you so much. You're so lovely. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Keep dancing through such a great message and a fabulous book. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music. 